我。Avengers. Huh? Assemble. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Pluripotent cells inside a xylo. Pluripotent cells into a xylon sacral polysaccharide nanobody. <laughs> Pope just jacked Ultron's ride. Why am I going over here? To see him on the thing and tell him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, tense up. It's Maximoff, man. That man and have some gaffa to shoot. Ms. Maximoff manipulates molecular polarity. <laughs> Would you like another one? <laughs> Wanda, vision is really hurt in the feelings. We need to link all three carriers for this to work. I got confused with my eyeline. I think I looked directly into camera. Okay. See, we got a bogey. Short range ballistic thermobaric payload. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. Where is it? I didn't do this to you. Nope. Go. Where is it? <laughs> well, let's see what the ghost wants. Find out what the ghost wants. Let's get this ghost. It takes two alpha membolet. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> it's stuck. <laughs> you want Wesley Snipes or Denzel? Denzel? Done. Roll sound. Cut the check. 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 I kind of want to see the Wesley Snipes. <laughs> all right, all right, you want you want Ben Affleck or Keanu Reeves? <laughs> You know that he was arrested for stealing a smoothie machine. Two smoothie machines. You want that? Oh, yes. I love this machine. It's like you put anything in smelt. You can put in yak's milk. We put in pig's fat. You mix together, it tastes like banana. It always tastes like banana. <laughs> ah! I can't do Ant-Man anymore. This thing, you can put anything in it, make it into juice, like um, hair. That was my least favorite. The hair smoothie was not the best. It's quite a growth spurt. Ha. It's quite a growth spurt. Oh, why can't I talk? That Arthur, I don't mean to yell right in your ear, brother. Talent's ready. <laughs> Sorry, honey, my bad. Oh, that was good. Cut the check. Cut the check. Cut the check. This week on Real Life Quarantine. So life in quarantine, it's been pretty chill. I mean, we're hanging out, we're playing games, reading, and just bonding all around. What? So we don't have a lot of rules in this house, but the one rule I do have, 
no one touches my chicken nuggets. And today, someone broke that rule. Family meeting, now! Now, I don't know a lot, but what I do know is when Carl calls a family meeting, someone's usually in trouble. Here we go. All right, y'all, I don't demand much. I let you stay here, I let you play my games, I even let you use my hallway as a slip and slide. It was dope. It was pretty dope. But someone just crossed the line. Wow, I guess you could say things are heating up in the kitchen. Someone just ate my chicken nuggets. Mm -hmm. So what? Shots fired. So what? That's my one rule, Brock. Well, it's a stupid rule. Stupid? Are you kidding me? Also, there's more food in the fridge, man. The only thing in there besides my chicken nuggets is vegetables. Carl hates vegetables. I hate vegetables, and Brock knows that. Good, you could stand to eat a few more veggies. What did you say? All I'm saying is that maybe you should take a break from eating 100 chicken nuggets a day and maybe eat a vegetable. Whew. I'm pretty fuming right now, but I know I gotta be slow to anger and take the high road. Be the better person. I'm not a rabbit, bro! Yo. I don't eat vegetables! I don't what eat chick fil chicken nuggets! Dude? That's it! What? Okay, first of all, bruh, don't cornstalk me. Dose of all, if you're hungry, go buy some more chicken nuggets. I would love to, Brock, but it's Sunday, and they're closed. I bought these extra to eat today. Then go to Mickey D's. It's all the same, dude. What did you say? I said go to Mickey D's. It's basically the same as Chick-fil-A, if not better. The fact that Brock just said that, it scares me. I'll kill you! I'm killing you, Brock! You know I love Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets! Go, bro! Stay in cover, dude! Oh, stop it! What's up with all this uh, quarantine coral? Next week on Real Life Quarantine. So I decided to kick Austin out of the house. This house is a nightmare, dude! Didn't even like it anyway, bro. Bye bye, Austin. Guess who just became the best looking guy in the house? To be honest, I'm glad Austin's gone. I called dibs on his Xbox. I'm done. I'm out of here, bro. I can't get enough. <laughs> you got a whole litter, bro. Who are those pugs? <laughs> He's not supposed to be in leaves like that. He worked hard raking up those leaves. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what bobsleds and bowling pins have in common? Didn't think so, but you're about to find out. I'm Kurt, this is Tori, that's Matt, and this is the challenge. We call this challenge bobsled bowling, and here's why. Tori is gonna push Matt Hall as a human bowling ball, dressed as a bowling pin, as fast as she can on this bobsled, three times into these pins. After each attempt, we'll reset the pins. So that's a total of 30 pins could get knocked down. Their job, knock down as many pins as they can in three tries. Your job is to try to guess how many pins they'll knock down. Make your guesses now. All right, ready, Tori? Ready. Are we ready, Matt? Ready, Tori. Let's pull. Six pins. Seven pins. Seven pins plus 13. That's a grand total of 20 pins. Whoever guessed closest to 20, you're the winner. Thanks for playing the challenge. Hey, what's going on everyone? It is so good to be hanging out with you tonight right here in the chat. Uh, it's been a blast so far. 
Uh, we'll be doing the challenge every week now. Uh, glad we found those videos. Uh, lots of fun there. Uh, we would love, love, love for you to take this time right now. If you have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do so. Uh, guys, we got a really fun night ahead of us this evening. Uh, before we get any further, uh, we're going to be doing an activity at the end of our time together that requires you to have a physical Bible. So you need, like right now, we'll give you like a minute or so, like go run, make sure you have a physical Bible, or at the very least, a Bible on your phone that is not on the same screen that you are watching this this video on right so like you can't like use your bible app on your phone if you're watching you know youtube on that same phone so make sure you go grab a bible real quick go ahead and do so right now Thanks for grabbing your Bible. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, hey, we're going to move into our favorite time of the week. It's time for meme review. You guys know the rules. Uh, we're going to be showing memes and TikToks on the screen right here. And all we need you to do is put your rating, one being the worst, 10 being the best meme we've ever seen. And we need to put have your rating in the live chat. Let's do this thing. All right, everyone, let's check these memes out today. 90% of dentists recommending Crest and the other 90% of dentists recommending Colgate up for a fight in Wii Boxing. What's your rating? What's your rating? Uh, they I'm say the six. fourth letter of your eye color plus the second letter of your name, the third letter of the month you were born, the fourth letter of your favorite drink, and the first letter of your favorite type of pet give you your spirit name. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh soap kills coronavirus people who ate tide pods in 2017 they called me a madman <laughs> gold dude i just watched that movie hey last john night. get That's in here i need your help with something yeah boss what's up i'm looking through resumes now i'm trying to pick a new illustrator but i can't decide between these two dudes all right what are the resumes look like yeah, they're super similar. Uh, one guy's really good at drawing crossbreeds of dogs, though. Yeah, I had a golden doodle growing up, so I'm kind of leaning towards him. All right, the golden doodle 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 do for this job. <laughs> uh, that's an eight. I love a good pun, if you want to call it that. Mom, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bug. <laughs> After accidentally letting sleep loose. <laughs> uh, seven. That's a seven for me, man. He was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop 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 coming Dude, uh, I'll give it an eight because penguins are so cute. <laughs> Dude, this is 100% me, both as a child and as an adult. Uh, it's a seven for me. Mobile ads when you... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're going to the app store, Jimbo. It's a rare Jimmy Neutron reference for you. Um... <laughs> That's an eight. Eight, eight, eight. 
<laughs> oh man, that's another eight, dude. These are some spicy ones today. These are these are muy caliente. Just one snap and this virus becomes. <laughs> Got the six infinity, ah, infinity, infinity cleaners. All right, last one. Seven eating nine. Six is terrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was a nine for me. I love that one. That's great. Hey, thanks for playing with us today. Love, love, love meme review. So much fun. Uh, thanks for hanging out and, and playing with us today. Hey, we're gonna feature, uh, me and Emily made a video uh, last Sunday that we want to uh, preview for you today. Uh, we're posting the full version of it this Saturday right here on our YouTube channel. Uh, as well as Facebook and, and other places as well. Uh, but we're gonna show you for, like just a little bit of it right now, just kind of as a preview. So without further ado, here is Daniel and Emily eating spicy wings on Easter Sunday. Hey everyone, we're, uh, we are here in the Acton basement this afternoon. It's actually Easter Sunday. Uh, I don't know when we're gonna put this video out, but it's Easter and we're celebrating uh, the <laughs> resurrection of our Lord Jesus by playing a game called Pot Ones. And this is not really a game more than a torture device. <laughs> and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be asking each other questions, uh, just random questions I found on the internet. And with each question, one of us has to eat a really, really hot hot wing. And they're actually getting progressively hotter. So today in the one spot, we are featuring the extra, extra, extra hot hot sauce chili habanero el yucatano hot sauce. Show the audience. Yeah, there you go. So that's the one for three dollars. You can get that at Dunn's today. So if you want to experience this at home, you can do that. As long as you stay six feet away from everybody else in the store. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Uh, so Emily, are you ready? No. <laughs> we've got some bread over here, and we've got water. We also have Briar's ice cream. Please sponsor us. Emily, would you like to go first, or would you like me to go first? You want to answer question first. Okay. Are you ready? No. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Is it so how first question is how how is it? Like, do you like the flavor at all? It's spicy. It's spicy. <laughs> Emily, I got a question for you. What is something that once you noticed it, you could no longer <laughs> unnotice? How spicy is it? <laughs> Well, Emily, how are you with spicy food in general? <laughs> Normally what? Normally I'm pretty great! Yeah? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so something that once you noticed, you can no longer unnotice it. The little... I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. Who would say it? The little and ampersand looks oh, like right. a guy dragging his butt along the ground. <laughs> And that's how I remembered how to like write it. it it'll be, like it'll be on the screen. It's right here. It's right here. Don't worry. Wait, can I bat like the Disney one? <laughs> yeah. As long as you take another bite. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Alright, so now are you that's your first question. You're you're one down. I don't like this is number one. That's one. Alright, so I guess it's my turn. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Mm. So, I'm actually in the middle of doing this right now. But these are really good. I'm in the process of doing it right now, but <laughs> because of quarantine, uh, I'm actually watching through all the Star Wars movies with a buddy of mine. Well, it's kind of on pause because of quarantine. And I'm also actually watching through all of the Marvel movies, like in the MCU. I'm gonna take that I'm watching through all of them in an order. Um, I've never done that before. So currently is the last time I've done something for the very first time. Ooh, now it's starting to hit. I know. I'm hungry though. <laughs> and knowing it's only gonna go up from here. <laughs> I know. I'm crying. Who? If you need bread. Um ooh, 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 ooh. I know, right? Like I do like Star Wars. I enjoy Star Wars a lot. Um, but I've never been able to, like, 
really like talk to anybody about like the intricacies of what's going on in the Star Wars universe or the Marvel universe because like I only know like bits and pieces of it. Um, I'm really really excited to see like the original trilogy of Star Wars because it's probably been ten or fifteen years since I've seen it. Ooh, wow. Okay, Emily, are you ready for your two? It's no. bad once you're talking. Holy cow. I know. This is not going to end well. <laughs> Emily, you cleaned your wing pretty well, though. I Show did. the camera. You did more than I did. Gone. You know what? I'll, I, I'll finish mine, I said I was too. hungry. I'll finish mine, too. At least okay. on this one. I can't, I can't promise that for the rest of them. Bad habits. We've all got one or six, you know what I'm talking about. Picking your nose, biting your fingernails, sleeping with your makeup on, being late for everything, or junk food for days. And that's just the person sitting next to you right now. Well, it's been said that it takes 21 days to form a new habit. So what if you went on a journey in the next three weeks to start something new or cement something you struggle doing? Something positive, something good. Take the Habits Challenge. For the next 21 days, hang with God for a short, focused time each day. Get some accountability once a week for your struggles. Make Bible memorization a priority. Get involved somewhere in your church. Give a tithe in the offering basket. Study the same passage of Scripture over a few times. You might be surprised what happens. At the end of 21 days, you won't be perfect, but you certainly will have made some progress. Time with God changes you, giving and serving changes your heart, and people journeying with you helps your decisions. 21 days might not change everything, but it could change a lot. Start a good habit today. All right, guys, uh, thanks for hanging out with us again tonight. I uh, want to remind you of our habits challenge that we just rewatched that video. Uh, I want to encourage you to find time this week to hang out with God, find accountability, to commit yourself to Bible memorization, to try to find a spot to get involved in our group. Text me or message me if you have questions about that specifically. Uh, commit yourself to tithing what you have whether it's your time, your talent, or your treasure, your money, whatever. And then last one, commit yourself to studying in depth God's word. We posted a video this past Saturday that is a great tool for you to interpret and to dive into scripture. Um, that, that will be a very useful thing for you in this process. And then later on tonight, we're actually going to study scripture together. Well, we're about to dive in right now, but we're going to be doing something called scripture engagement. Um, that, that a friend of ours will help lead us through. But we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but I would really encourage you, we have two weeks on this habits challenge to create these habits that change your life now and forever. Because it takes 21 days to start a habit. So use this time, even when you're isolated, to start a great habit. Let's dive into our text today. So all week long, we've been talking about these things that we wanted to be when we were little and we were also talking about the superhero Captain Marvel and how her biggest weakness was that she didn't know who she was. She didn't know her backstory. And yesterday we talked about our backstory as a human race, right? Genesis 1, very first page of the Bible. It tells us that you and I are created in the image of God. A kind of a lofty term is the Imago Dei, which is a Latin phrase, which means image of God. But it means that we're, we're create, there's something inside of us that bears God's imprint. And that's a really key theme throughout scripture, so much so that Paul even talks about it when he talks about who Jesus is in the book of Colossians, which we're going to be in a ton tonight, both in this time as well as our, uh, our next activity. Uh, in the book of Colossians, Paul is actually referencing a hymn that was sung throughout the early church, and he's using this to help illustrate Jesus's God 
darkness. So let's read this together. Uh, Colossians 1, verses 15 through 17. If you want to follow along in your Bible that you have in your hands, great. I'll also be reading it myself. So I'd encourage you to follow along. Colossians 1, verses 15 through 17 says this. Christ is the image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things that we can see and the things we cannot see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. Jesus existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Throughout the rest of the passage, Paul goes on to describe Jesus' mighty and, and powerful nature. And, and Paul uses this language, the image of the invisible God. He's actually pulling it from the verses that we read yesterday, and they do that all the biblical authors do that all the time. Cross references. If you had a map of, of every verse in the Bible, you would see that it hyperlinks to so many other places throughout Scripture. And that's exactly what Paul is doing here. He is referencing Genesis chapter 1, when we were created in, in God's image. And Paul is telling the church in Colossae that Jesus, like we talked about this past month, that Jesus is God. And, and Paul goes on to talk about even more of his might and power and authority. So this passage tells us even more about the God whose image we're created in. And though we ourselves are not God, I'm, I'm glad about that. We're not God like Jesus is. We do have inerrant worth because we're made in God's image. And not only that, but because we're made in God's image, you and I have a job to do. And our job, as explained in Genesis 1 and here, is to co-rule this world with God. And that's a big theme throughout the opening pages of the Bible, as well as the entire book. And then in the next chapter of Colossians, in Colossians chapter 2, Paul goes on to talk about what happens when we decide to take up our call as bearers of God's image, and we decide to follow Jesus. In Colossians chapter 2, we're going to be reading uh, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, then we're actually going to jump a little bit to 12 through 15. So follow along if you would. Chapter 2, verse 6. And you, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. We're jumping to verse 12 now. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him, you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he gave for for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took away took it away by nailing it to the cross. What a beautiful picture. In this way he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authority. He shamed them publicly by his victory and put it on the cross. Paul says that something supernatural happens when we choose to follow Jesus. Through Jesus our identities are transformed and we move from death to life from old to new and we begin to become perfected completed and be more fully made in God's image this process called sanctification this process of becoming more like God this transformation is so supernatural that Paul uses so many metaphors to explain it but here's an here's the idea when we meet Jesus he begins to transform us inside and out. You're human, but through Jesus, you can be transformed. 
And this metaphor might not be as sophisticated as Paul's, but I think it might help us imagine what Jesus can do through you. Uh, we've been talking about this, this character, Captain Marvel. And Carol Danvers, who is Captain Marvel, she used to just be an ordinary person until something crazy and extraordinary happened. If you've seen the movie, you might know what I'm talking about. But in the movie, Captain Marvel, we see Carol's transformation take place. There is this experimental light speed engine and it explodes, but Carol isn't injured by it. Instead, she's mysteriously absorbs this energy, which transforms her DNA and gives her superpowers. And from that moment on, Carol was no longer just Carol Danvers. She still was the person that she always been with all her skills and passions and personality intact, but she was somehow suddenly more. She had access power to a power that wasn't human in the same way. When you and I choose to follow Jesus, we get access to power that isn't human. Through the image of God, through Jesus, God's power begins to transform and complete us, making us more like him. Remember yesterday and remember Monday, we were talking about these dreams that we had when we were little kids. Maybe Jesus wants to transform you by using those things that we talked about. Maybe he even wants to use those things to save the world. You know, we've talked about embracing who we are. Because you are made in God's image. You are valuable and you're unique and you have worth. We've also talked about embracing who you could be. When Jesus takes control of your life, he gives you the power to be more like him and the, the perfect image of God. And through Jesus, the unique things about you could take on a whole new life and have an impact greater than you could ever imagine. Through Jesus, our weaknesses are no longer the emphasis of our story. His power in us is greater than our flaws. And because God made you, God knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly who you could be. And he knows how to turn your ordinary life into an extraordinary one. Maybe even a heroic one. And it all starts with who we are and who we could become. Because heroes embrace who God created them to be. Hey everyone, uh, I know we just finished up our, uh, our lesson time, but we're going to be transitioning into a time of something called scripture engagement. As you can tell, I've got a guest with us right now. His name is Dr. Phil Collins. He was a professor of Emily's back when she went to school in Northern Indiana at Taylor University. Um, he does uh, this thing called scripture engagement that, that allows us to be able to uh, dive into scripture in ways that we might not have thought before. And actually, I'm just going to hand this right over to him, and he'll be able to take us through this process. Very good. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, thank you, all you guys. It's uh, good to be with you. Uh, I, my background, actually, before I became a professor was uh, in youth ministry. I spent 
uh, 16 years in youth ministry, both with an organization called Youth for Christ and at a church doing what Daniel is doing. So I feel very comfortable being with you. Wish I was there instead of doing this whole crazy thing. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited to be with you to tell you a little bit about scripture engagement, but mostly to give you a scripture engagement experience. Scripture engagement is not a phrase you've probably heard before, but uh, it's nothing new. Uh, uh, the idea is uh, when we come to scripture, how are we supposed to come to the Bible? You probably have been told, like I was told, uh, and I've told many people that the way to grow as a Christian is to pray and read your Bible. That's kind of the core of it. Uh, as you pray and, and read scripture, you meet God and are changed by, by God. And, and I really believe that that's true. But uh, all of my years of youth ministry and then a lot of years as a professor, I, I really didn't teach people how to read the Bible. And that's kind of one, what's captured my interest these last 10 years or so is how do you teach somebody to come to the Bible, to be changed spiritually, to grow spiritually? Uh, and really, why do we come to the Bible? I think the reason we come to the Bible is because we want to meet God. We want to know God, to be changed by Him. So uh, how do I read the Bible to do that? Well, there's a lot of ways to read the Bible. Uh, you can read it for just information, or you can read it because you feel guilty and, you know, I did something wrong, so I better read my Bible and make up for it, or, uh, or just all sorts of different reasons why we come to the Bible. But I want to come to the Bible now to meet Jesus and to allow him to change me. So I read the Bible relationally. Uh, I read it to know him and to be changed by him, uh, to be loved by him. Uh, and and it, it's very motivating for me to come to scripture every day uh, to really uh, meet Christ. Uh, I started reading the Bible when I was your age. Uh, I was about 12 or 13. Uh, so for some of the younger ones of you, and I, I just did it as a bet to myself to see if I could do it. I wanted to read through the entire Bible, and I actually did. It took me a couple of years, and then I put it down. And I was like, well, I read that book. I don't read, I'd never read a book twice in my life. Uh, but I kept coming back to it and been, been reading ever since. And it's, it really has. It's been the most important thing to me in my life to change me spiritually, to help me to meet God. So those two things, praying and reading your Bible, I always separated those out. First, I pray, I talk to God, then I read the Bible, he talks to me. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I've learned in the last 10 years is to combine those two. Uh, instead of praying and reading, I, uh, I pray my Bible. And I want to give you an experience with the doing that. Uh, you're going to need to turn to Colossians chapter 1, and it will be important that you actually have that up on your screen somewhere or pull out a Bible and look at that passage. We're going to pray Colossians 1, 9 through 14. So the idea of praying scripture is you read a little bit and then instead of just trying to think what that means, which is a very important, but uh, to turn it around immediately and talk to God about it. So that's what I'm going to lead us through. I'm going to read just a little bit of the passage. I'm going to pray, give you an example of the way I might pray that passage, and then I'm going to pause and let you pray, and then we'll do that for a few verses, and then I'll stop and I'll switch things up. Does that make sense? Read a little bit, turn that into a prayer right away to God. I'll pause, you pray, whatever you want to pray. Mine is just an example, not better than anybody else's, uh, and then we'll go from there, okay? So Colossians uh, 1 uh, verse 9. I'm just going to read the first part of verse 9. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. All right, so I actually want to talk about that to, to the Lord. All right, so Lord God, uh, Paul is saying to, to the Colossians that he's been praying for them uh, and he hasn't stopped praying for them. And, and I recognize that there are people in my life that have prayed for me for years, for my grandparents, my parents, professors when I was in college, ministry people. And I just want to thank you for those people that have prayed for me for years. There's probably not a Christian alive that hasn't been prayed for by somebody else. And, and I'm grateful for those people in my life. And I want to be a person who prays for other people. So now you pray. Reread that uh, first half of verse 9 and, and you pray. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to keep reading in verse 9. Uh, we've not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Okay. He's asking for the Colossians to be filled with the knowledge of his will, God's will, through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Okay, so I'm going to pray. Talking, my first prayers, this first part is about me. You make it about you. Okay. Father God, we, uh, we see here that you give all wisdom and understanding, all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And I want to say that uh, that's my request from you. I want wisdom and understanding in a spiritual way so that I would know your will. I want to know your will, God. Your will is good and perfect and changes everything. So I, I ask for that kind of wisdom. All right, now, now you pray and ask for that wisdom for yourself. Okay, verse 10. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way. All right, let me pray about that a little bit for myself. Lord God, I want to live a life worthy of you. I want to please you in every way. Now, I know from reading your word that I don't please you so that you love me, but you love me, so I want to please you. Help me to get that in the right order. So often I think I have to be good enough, uh, please you, and then you'll love me. But, uh, but you've loved me long before I've ever tried to please you. So, so help me to go about that business and, and, and be in your word to, to know you and live a life worthy of you. All right? You, you pray that. First, first part of verse 10. All right, the rest of verse 10. Bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. All right, let's pray about that. Lord God, uh, bearing fruit in every good work reminds me of the fruit of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, and so on. And, and I want that. Uh, I want to bear fruit in, in all of my work. Uh, and I ask for your help doing that. Uh, and I really want to grow in my knowledge of you. I know I don't know everything about you, I never will, but the more I learn about you, the more I love you, the more I'm grateful for all you've done. So, so help me to know who you are, Lord. All right, you try. All right, now starting in verse 11, we're gonna start changing it. I've been praying for myself and I've encouraged you to pray for yourself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pray for the first Christian church of Dodge City, all right? You can pray for your youth group or you can pray for the whole church. So we're gonna turn the rest of this uh, passage in Colossians into a prayer, not for ourselves, but into a prayer for, for your church, okay? So verse 11, it says, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, uh, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Okay, so let's pray this over, over, um, over your church. Lord God, I pray that the youth group there in Dodge City would be strengthened. Uh, even though we're separated and this whole COVID-19 thing is going on, uh, your power, uh, according to your glorious might, uh, can give us great endurance and patience. Um, and we can be joyful in this process. So I ask for that uh, for the first, first church in Dodge City and for the youth group especially. Okay, now you use some of the words from this passage. You, you pray for your own church. So important to be praying for your church and for Daniel and Emily and for all the leadership there. And then verse 13, it says, For he, uh, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. 
All right, let me pray this over the church. Lord God, you have rescued the people of First Church from the dominion of darkness. We've all seen darkness. We know evil in our lives. We've seen it around us. And I pray that you would again rescue First Church uh, from darkness. Keep the darkness away, Lord God, and, uh, and bring us into the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ, uh, because you love him so much. All right, you pray for your church using these, these words in verse 13. And then verse 14, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Lord God, thank you that you have redeemed us, uh, that you care for us. Uh, we pray as a people that are redeemed, that have gathered together there in Dodge City, that uh, that we had would have a sense of your forgiveness. So often we're slow to forgive ourselves, slow to forgive other people. I pray that that would be a sign of uh, the first church in Dodge City, that they would be uh, people that know that they're forgiven and that they're redeemed. And I ask for your blessing. I come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So isn't that a little different? Didn't that take your prayers in different ways? So I'm an old geezer, obviously. And uh, I've been praying for many years. And I honestly, my prayers are very similar if just left up to my own. They're not very deep and they're not very broad. But when I pray scripture, I find myself praying about things that I wouldn't normally pray about, and I pray about them with more depth. So I'd encourage you, uh, one of the ways that you can engage scripture is to pray scripture. Now there's a lot of ways, maybe you didn't connect with this one. Uh, there's a lot of ways to engage scripture. I'd encourage you to Google scripture engagement Bible gateway. And there are all sorts of articles, 50 articles, and uh, some videos that are on that website that uh, people from Taylor University, the Center for Scripture Engagement, have written to help you engage Scripture. There's a lot of different ways to do that. This is just one. So just wanted to give you that experience, and I uh, hope that's been, been helpful. Daniel, yeah, thank anything you. else? Dude, thank you so much for that. Uh, guys, we're, we're thankful for, for people like Phil, and we're thankful that we have this opportunity that we can worship together, that we can, uh, we can worship through praying and through reading scripture and engaging with it well. Um, so we're all so thankful for you, Phil. Uh, oh, for that. Glad to be here with you all. For sure. So I hope that that experience was something that was helpful for you. And when it comes to this idea of, how do I read my Bible or how do I study scripture? Phil was able to walk us through just praying through each verse. And I would really encourage you to check out what he recommended uh, on BibleGateway.com. He didn't say this, but he wrote all these articles. <laughs> he wrote a lot of them and, and he, he had a profound impact on the way that I know Emily reads scripture. Um, and, and I know how important that is to her. Um, so I would recommend checking that out because it will do you a ton of good BibleGateway.com. Check out scripture engagement from there. I want to ask one more thing of you before we get out of here today. Last week, we mentioned a survey that we are encouraging you to check out. And again, we're going to ask you again this week because those things can really help us. There's a link in the bio right below us. Um, so make sure you check that out, please, please, please. It makes it so this experience can be much more tailored to you. Um, and it can be better, um, because I want to make sure that we can create stuff that's for you because this is for you. Um, and if there's anything that we can do to make this, this better, we want to make sure we do it. So check out that survey that's at the bottom of our links tonight. Each week we end our online gatherings with this word of peace, wholeness, and restoration. This Hebrew, this really, really rich Hebrew word, it promises this hope of restoration. And I don't know about you, but right now it feels like there's a lot to be yet to be restored. Because as Ford County cases may be rising, it feels like we are kind of caught in the middle of it. But what we read tonight in Colossians tells us that our Jesus is so great. He's so mighty and he's so powerful that he can be the one who can restore all things. And we say this word because it reminds us of the entire story of the Bible, 
that Jesus himself is restoring all things back to the way they were intended to be. And the craziest part, and that's the, that's the story of the Bible, right? It's God putting his family back together. And the craziest part of all of it was that he invites you and he invites me to join him on this great rescue mission of bringing the world back to him. And we're reminded of that through this word and through our text and through our engagement scripture this evening. This word of peace and wholeness and restoration and a hope for God bringing things back to the way they were intended to be. Shalom. Shalom.